Welcome back. As I mentioned, we have Seth Teigen here, who's here on behalf of Providence Mission Hospital. Well, welcome. It's very nice to meet you. Thank you for having me, Lisa. You're welcome. Thank you for joining the show. Now, this is the first time that we've met you, and we've actually had you on the show. We've had many of your doctors come on and uh, doing great stuff over there. There's a lot of wonderful specialties that you guys are doing, and I know that not too long ago you built the cancer center, the Leonard Cancer Center, yep. and um, now you're going to expand even more. But before we get into that, tell me a little bit about yourself and how you arrived at Providence. I'm, I'm happy to do that. And again, thank you for having me this morning. Uh, so about four years ago, so I came here from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I was oh. the CEO of a couple hospitals in Milwaukee with another Catholic health system. And I've been telling folks, Catholic health care is a relatively small world. Um, and so I got a call in, uh, I guess it would be the spring uh, or the winter of 2019 and was asked, we have this job in Southern California with another Catholic health system. Would you be interested? Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I'm not. And they said, well, wh well, why not? We think it would be a perfect professional fit for you. <laughs> um, it's in this incredible location. And we'd never been to Southern California, my family. Ah, we'd okay. never been to SoCal. So when I heard Mission Viejo, I, I didn't know where that was. Yes. Um, but at the time, the polar vortex was blowing through the Midwest. So 40 <laughs> below zero with the wind oh, chill man. in no Milwaukee thanks. at the time. <laughs> And I called my wife on the phone. Our, our, our kids were in uh, both very young at the time, seven and six, or eight and seven maybe at the time. And, and I said, do you want to go check this out? I mean, if we're ever going to leave the Midwest, we're Wisconsin natives, uh, this would be our opportunity to you know, have our adventure. Mm -hmm. And she said, let's go check it out. And we came out here. It's been the best thing that we've done. Incredible professional opportunity for me. Sure. Um, you know, Mission Hospital and Providence in totality is a really, really special place. Mm -hmm. uh, but then to get to raise our family here, I would tell you, I, I was uh, sharing with John prior to this, it, it's interesting. People from the Midwest, I think when you say you're moving to California in their mind, they, they picture Los Angeles. Oh. Uh, or you know they think that I'm stuck in traffic all the time and the reality is this is a lot like the Midwest it's safe great public schools um, great place to raise a family mm -hmm. and then of course the weather that we get to enjoy oh, yeah. and the California lifestyle that we get to enjoy is really special so it's been it's been an amazing transition for us three and a half years I've been here it's gone by really fast and, and that when you say uh, when you said that you said no I, my mouth just dropped. I'm like, wait, 40 <laughs> below, and yeah. here we never see anything yeah. close to that. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and, and again, once once we looked at a map and understood where both Mission Viejo and Laguna Beach were, yeah. uh, where the two hospital campuses were, it made it that much more intriguing. Exactly. And, you know, it's a shame that actually when you say that on the TV, you probably see a lot of what's going on in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. and you never really hear anything that's going on in Orange County because we don't have a local television station that covers just Orange County. Yeah. So we get... You you know, sort of umbrellaed by Los Angeles. So glad you came. So I'm uh, congratulations so to you. Yeah. <laughs> so give me a little bit of a history about uh, Providence Mission Hospital. It's been around for quite some time. Yeah, so it, it's really interesting. It, 50, almost 51 years ago, the land was actually donated um, by the O'Neill family or the, the Ranch Mission Viejo Company, as right. you're probably familiar with. Tony Moiso and his family mm -hmm. uh, continue to run the ranch. That was donated to us 50 years ago. Uh, in this idea, if you can imagine this, even it's hard for me to imagine a time where the only exit off the five was Crown Valley. Mm, yeah. uh, <laughs> and Mission Viejo wasn't born yet right. uh, as one of these first developed communities. So I, I think there was a lot of forethought from the community leaders at the time to recognize if we're going to continue to build out a community and have a place to live and have great schools and churches and all these other things, we need a hospital right. in the middle of that. We need a we need a place to be able to take care of our community. Mm -hmm. And so Mission Hospital was born. You can right. uh, see on these slides behind you here that our original part of the hospital campus is in the upper right-hand corner. So the single-story building that lives on our campus today. Mm -hmm. uh, now you can see the two bed towers there uh, adjacent to that. That's Tower 1 and Tower 2 as we've expanded over time. Mm -hmm. And then as you mentioned earlier in the lower right-hand corner, that's the Leonard Cancer Institute. Right. Uh, I joke with people, best construction project I've ever been part of. Uh, and the reason I say that is I started in August of 19, and I got to go to the ribbon cutting in November of 19. Oh, wow. So I really yeah. did none of the work um, <laughs> and got to do all of the celebrating uh, yeah. for all the brilliant people, including our medical oh, staff yeah. and many others that put that plan together. 
Yeah, and it, it is amazing, and I've heard nothing but great things about it. And it's good that you specialize. I mean, I like the fact that it has a lot of specialties there. And it would seem that we do have an awful lot of specialties in other areas as well. What makes that one so special compared to some of the others we have? Well, I, I, I think from a hospital standpoint, one of the things that's really unique to Mission Hospital is the fact that we're the only level two adult pediatric pediatric trauma receiving center in South Orange County. Okay. So all the way down to Camp Pendleton, uh, all the way uh, going up the coastline into, all, all the way up to Newport Beach and then up into Lake Forest and Irvine and over to Rancho Mission Viejo and Rancho Santa Margarita. Mm -hmm. uh, that's kind of the catchment area. And so anyone that's in a traumatic uh, event whether that's a car accident or you know the e-bike uh, situation we have in our community now, mm -hmm. we've seen a major uptick in uh, e-bike activity, oh, yeah. uh, head injuries, not just not just kids, adults uh, as well. Um, you know, but we'll, we'll see cl probably close to three thousand traumas this year, if you can believe that. And if you back into wow. how many that is a day, yeah, that is I mean, a lot. You know, between eight and ten traumas are occurring on any given day at our hospital. Yep. So that is a special and unique service. And then what what I would say on the surgical specialty side is I, I would put our medical staff up against any academic medical center. We're really blessed that I think we have a lot of physicians that want to come and practice medicine in South Orange County. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's created this great environment at our hospital where we really feel like many of the services we provide uh, are only provided at academic medical centers, but we're doing that in a faith-based, not-for-profit community hospital oh. setting, which, which is unique. Right, and, yeah. and, it's, and it's not small. You have an you have an awful no, lot to offer. No, it's a <laughs> and it's a big place. I mean, I think yeah. what we're most proud of, especially during the pandemic, is our caregivers and the right. twenty seven hundred caregivers between the two hospital campuses, eight hundred and fifty medical staff. It's a really big place, and I think the best thing for the community is um, there's great health care in this community. It's not unique just to Providence yeah. and Mission Hospital, um, but I think our community has choice. And when you have some of those super specialized services, um, you know. God forbid you need them. Uh, right. That's what I always tell people in the community. I hope to see you again, just not at the hospital. Right. Um, but we really are here to serve in that way. So it's a pretty special, uh, special setup we have at Mission. Well, and we have a we have a slide that shows uh, an awful lot of accolades yeah. that you have, which is which is really remarkable. So uh, when you look at all of these accolades, we're, we're proud of all of them, by the way, and this isn't all of them, this is, this is just a handful of them. Right. But there are a couple that I think are unique and special. Uh, again, especially if, if you're talking about dealing with really scary things in healthcare. And I always think a stroke as an example. Mm -hmm. I think having a stroke, or if you know somebody uh, that's had a stroke or a family member that's had a stroke, it's very scary mm -hmm. um, because you don't know if that person's gonna make a full recovery. Uh, are they gonna have things that they're gonna have to continue to deal with from a health perspective? And we're a comprehensive stroke center. So there's over 6,000 hospitals across the country there's less than 200 comprehensive stroke centers. Wow. Uh, we happen to be one of those. Okay. Um, and there's lots of criteria that go into becoming a comprehensive stroke center. And then you can see the, the other things that are on that uh, slide, including you know, our mom-baby services, um, you know, we're, we're one of the only sepsis certified organizations in our organ in, oh. in all of Providence. We were the first to okay. be uh, sepsis certified by the Joint Commission. And of course, we're very proud uh, last year being named by Newsweek the number one hospital in Orange County. Wow. Um, and again, this is good for Orange County. We have right. great health care in Orange County right. and all the other health systems. So right. that competitive environment, I think, sets up nicely if you're shopping for your health care. Well, exactly, exactly. Now, as we, as we approach the remainder of 2023, obviously we just started. Yeah. What are some of the things that you think are gonna be pretty challenging? Uh, well, for, for us, I think our biggest headwind is the workforce. Um, there's lots of different data points that are floating around out there, but nationally they're talking about us being somewhere around 2 million nurses short by 2030. Wow. And so if you think about what's happening in Orange County, again, this is great if you're a consumer of healthcare. Um, you have Providence Mission Hospital expanding, you have Memorial Care, UCI building their new hospital up in Irvine, right. uh, Hogue building out their footprint in Irvine, City of Hope coming to Irvine. And the reason that becomes even more important to us is we're thinking about all those nurses and technicians and pharmacists and x-ray techs that yeah. we're gonna need, and we're all competing for the same people. Right. So I think it's gonna become even more challenging here in South Orange County to not only attract and retain the top talent, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but we're competing with one another for a very finite group of people. Well, right. And, yeah, so how we can create more healthcare workers, I think, in the future um, becomes a really big deal for us. 
You know, do you think it has something to do with um, maybe education? Like, do, you, do folks like yourself and maybe some other people that are working within the hospitals uh, can go and talk to people at an early age going, you know, these are the opportunities, this is what we're looking for. Yeah. Is it something that they do? It, it, it is, and we have multiple partnerships with different nursing schools and, and different programs here in South Orange County. We even just recently reinstated a program we'd had with Jay Sarah, um, the, the high school, to bring students in in high school to get them interested in working in healthcare, okay. um, and sometimes it's you're interested in science, and so healthcare yeah. is is appealing. I think for most people that choose this as a career, I started my career in the hospital when I was 14 years old as a dishwasher, if you can oh, believe wow. that, okay. uh, and then became a clinical person. I was a phlebotomist, an X-ray tech, and a CT tech okay. um, for many years before getting into leadership. And you hear people talk about being called work in healthcare, sure. and it really is, I think, for the most part, this idea of you, you like the feeling of helping someone right. uh, or helping someone on their journey, whether it's the diagnosis mm -hmm. of something that might be scary, mm -hmm. the birth of a child, which might be the most exciting or yeah. one of the most exciting uh, parts in their life, or healing from a major injury or a car accident. So right. um, I think that's why people choose to work in healthcare and mm -hmm. how we're trying to excite this next generation of the workforce, yeah. um, that this is special work and it is unique to working in healthcare. Care. Well, exactly, and I'm, I'm glad that you said that you're partnering with, uh, you know, obviously the, the high school. Sometimes you wonder if yeah. you shouldn't go younger. I, I know. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we, we started need the at a younger age, in there. right? I uh, mean, you can certainly show them because I mean, a lot of the times they have these visions of what they want to be, but then once they get there, it's not necessarily what they yeah. they want to be. Or so so exposing them to different areas. Well, is, I think is you're a spot good on. Idea is a great idea. So you have expansions. You're going to spend um, many millions yeah, lots on your of, expansions. Uh, so I think this is really exciting. I, again, just to give you an idea of how big our health system is. So we have 52 hospitals around the country, 120,000 caregivers uh, that work at those 52 locations, thousands of ambulatory sites. We're in Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California, Texas, New Mexico, and Montana. Wow. Um, and the reason I share all that with you is the health system's really making a couple strategic investments. Mm -hmm. Only a couple, because we can only afford to do a couple, right? right. We, can't, we can't do these sorts of expansions at all 52 locations. Right. Uh, we're one of those two real big strategic investments that Providence uh, is going to make into the future. And so they're picking and choosing South Orange County to really double down on Mission Hospital mm -hmm. and uh, our physicians and our caregivers and our medical groups right. and our ambulatory centers to really build out something for the future. Mm -hmm. Part of that is because of the growth. And, and, and as you know, in Rancho Mission Viejo, right. we're, we're, and it keeps we're, going. we're building out <laughs> with this 40,000 square foot MOB. Right. Um, in San Clemente, we're really trying to be the healthcare provider down there for that community yeah. uh, as they lost their hospital a handful of years ago. Right. Um, but this new bed tower will get us to all private rooms, mm. which um, my joke with people when they say, well, why is that important? And, I, and, and I, my quick answer is, if you're in the hospital um, recovering from a surgery or if you're visiting your loved one, would you like a roommate? I know I wouldn't. Yeah. Um, you know, so our promise to our patients is that they're going to have an exceptional experience in our yeah. hospital. And sometimes... Uh, especially when the hospital swells with activity and we have to use some of those shared rooms, um, we, don't always, we don't always have the ability to deliver on that experience we want right. to offer patients right. and their families. Right. Um, so I think it's going to get us to all private rooms and then also replay to replace all of our operating rooms. You heard me talk about how we attract and retain those top physicians from mm -hmm. around the country. Mm -hmm. You know, How do you attract someone from the East Coast uh, at a Johns Hopkins or right. the South, like an MD Anderson or some of the best schools in the country. Well, you do that through making sure that you have the equipment oh, yeah. and the technology exactly. uh, and that kind of contemporary environment they're used to working in. And this exactly. will allow us to do that building out the next phase of our operating rooms as well. Well, that's great because there's an awful lot of equipment that's latest and greatest that uh, I've seen in some of the other areas. Yeah. And so I think that's really a smart thing because you definitely need to compete, as you mentioned before. So excellent. Now. Uh, you mentioned a couple of different things. Maybe you can be a little more specific on some of the new services. So, for instance, a clinical program development. What are you doing there? Yeah, so for, well, Ran I'll talk about Rancho Mission Viejo and San Clemente maybe first. Okay. Uh, only because uh, the services that we're going to offer, they're kind of mirror each other. So each, each of those MOBs will have uh, a robust urgent care platform. Um, a little higher acuity than maybe we've we've been able to do in the past. Okay. Uh, we'll have laboratories, radiology departments, 
um, uh, potentially a pharmacy, um, fa family medicine, uh, rotating specialists at each of those locations. Okay. And the way I've tried to describe it to our partners in the city uh, at each of these locations is we really want to be able to do 95% of what that community needs at this, at this healthcare okay. um, ambulatory site. And for the 5%, for the things that are really acute, you want to come to a major medical center anyhow. Right. Um, you know, if you're, if you're in a car accident, going to the urgent care isn't where you want to be. If you're dealing with a new cancer diagnosis, going to the urgent care isn't where you're going to go and get mm -hmm. that treatment or advice. Mm -hmm. You're going to you're going to come to Leonard Cancer Institute, or you're going to come to Mission Hospital, or somewhere else in the community. Right, right. Now, uh, what is it that you are offering down uh, in San Clemente? Uh, San Clemente is uh, going to be unique uh, in the way that. Uh, well, one, I think it's an incredible location. So if you're, I think most people are familiar with where the outlet mall is there and where the right. Chick-fil-A is there when you're, when you're pulling in. Uh, we own all that property kind of adjacent to the Chick-fil-A. Uh, oh. Again, we'll have family medicine, rotating specialists, uh, a urgent care called Exer, which is our urgent care partner. We've opened some other ones here uh, in Orange County and, and in LA County. I think most recently at Rancho Santa Margarita's and Huntington Beach are the two that we've opened most recently. Mm -hmm. And the difference with an exer urgent care is they're staffed by emergency medicine physicians. So typically, uh, in most urgent care settings, uh, you would see a mid-level provider, a, a, a physician assistant or a nurse practitioner, or you may see a physician. Sure. Um, but these are staffed by emergency medicine doctors. And okay. so I think that's going to be a game changer for that community, mm -hmm. being able to access emergency light -like care right. um, and, if necessary, be transferred to Mission Hospital right. um, for something that's really acute. Right. Right. Well, that, that's that's very smart. Now, most of the folks here know Mission Hospital through Laguna Beach, mm -hmm. and that is still there, of course. It and is you, still there. You guys are, are still making changes and enhancements there. Tell me why that is so important. Well, one, the history of the Laguna Beach Hospital is pretty mm -hmm. interesting. So that, that hospital was started after a police officer was shot in that community and died in transit uh, to a neighboring hospital. Mm -hmm. And that community came together and said, we need a hospital here or we need emergency care here. And the land was again donated, uh, yeah. an incredible story by, some, by a philanthropic member of the community and then the hospital was born. Mm -hmm. So if you fast forward the 60 plus years uh, that we've been down in that community, remember it wasn't always part of Providence or St. Joseph Health. Um, you know, it was separate prior to that. Right. Um, we really do everything you could imagine down there. And I don't think we've done a good job of telling people that. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that is, we do spine surgery, we do orthopedic surgery, we, have, we do outpatient endoscopy services. We have an incredible women's imaging center down there oh, um, nice. for screening mammography and all the other services you may need. And then of course, we were blessed to have Bill and Sue Gross, uh, who most people know, very philanthropic here in Orange yeah. County, um, come forward and, and help us completely redo that emergency department. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Again, another great ribbon cutting I got to attend, didn't do any <laughs> of the work. Uh, early in my tenure here, we had the ribbon cutting down there uh, for the emergency department that's been redone. And what I tell people is I, I live in Laguna Niguel um, and I have two young boys. Again, they're 11 and 10. Uh, if, you've, if you've ever been around young boys or if you've raised any of your own, you know, you know they find themselves in, you know, with broken bones and scrapes and bumps and heaven knows how they get into all these things. But Laguna Beach is typically where we go from an emergency medicine standpoint. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's typically a shorter wait. Yeah. Um, and uh, they can get right in and you kind of get in and out. Uh, one, one of the complexities we have with the Mission Viejo campus is because we're that trauma center that I mm -hmm. talked about mm -hmm. and there's so much trauma activity, you can at times end up with that extended wait time, right. um, which I know frustrates uh, many of our patients and community members and we're spending a lot of time in 2023 trying to make that better. Right. Uh, we had an expansion of our emergency department that we just did this past year. Uh, a lot of fundraising again from community members and helping us expand to be mm -hmm. able to ease the way of patients and their families as they come into the medical center. So it's been an exciting time. Wow. And for the short amount of time that you've been here, you've done a fantastic job of having it all right at the tip of your tongue. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if, you, if you want to learn an organization quickly, come during a pandemic. Oh, um, that's true. Huh? You know, I'd only been on the job for about half a dozen months and all of a sudden COVID was on our doorstep. Wow. And I know it seems like a distant memory to people, but there was a time where we didn't have a vaccine and people yeah. weren't wearing face masks right. and we really did not know how to take care of this patient population. Again, I'm so proud of our medical staff and our caregivers. 
Uh, when we talk about healthcare heroes, these people had all the same fears as you, know, you and I and everybody else uh, and chose to come through the doors every day to take right. care of the community that we serve. And that's pretty special. That truly right. is answering a call um, and doing something special for the community you live in. So I uh, feel blessed to get to do this work. Well, thank you so much for being here and for oh, well, all of the you. great information. Again, and th thank you for having me. One, one other thing that I, that I know I need to mention, it's, it was on our, our last slide for this presentation, was just around philanthropy. We are so blessed uh, to live in this philanthropic community. It is nothing oh. like I have ever uh, been part yeah. of in my life, I would tell you. Uh, coming from the Midwest, we didn't have these sort of resources. Mm -hmm. And philanthropy really drives our ability, yes, to buy new technologies and robots and build buildings, um, but it really allows us uh, to move more quickly in a way that many other health systems across the country can't because this right. community's been so generous. The Leonard Cancer Institute's the best example. That was exactly. a $70 million project. Mm -hmm. $35 million came from this community wow. um, and was fundraised in less than three years. It's pretty yeah. amazing. And we yeah. know that's going to be a big part of our expansion as we build right. our bed tower. We mm -hmm. know our community is going to want to have their fingerprints all over it. Great. Well, we, we can talk to the foundation separately, as we have done Absolutely, in the past. Absolutely. You certainly can. All right. Thank you again. All right. Thank you, Lisa. You're welcome. If you'd like more information about any of the things that we have discussed, you can always go to providence.org forward slash mission. We'll be right back.